Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. Today I want to talk about connecting multiple 3D printers to a single Raspberry Pi. In the uh, Octoprint overview video I did uh, last week, I brought this up briefly, showed you a quick example, but there is more to it, so I wanted to do a more in-depth video here. Uh, I think it's something that could potentially save you a lot of money if you're looking to use uh, Octopi with multiple printers. So. Before we go ahead and get started, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. It'll really help us out. And let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. All right guys, so I'm gonna walk you through setting up two printers. That's what I have right now. You can repeat this process to get up to uh, four printers connected to the single Raspberry Pi. It is possible to get more than four printers on a single Raspberry Pi if you wanted to use USB hubs. I haven't tried it so I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, four is typically more than enough and if you have more than four 3D printers in your house you're probably doing something else anyway. If you feel differently please leave a comment below. I would love to hear your reasoning for it. Let's go ahead and get started. So right now I am assuming that you have your first printer set up so I've got my Ender 3 Pro and I've got both printers connected to the Raspberry Pi now so you can see I've got two connections here. The first thing we're going to want to do is figure out which one of these go to the Ender 3 Pro. So if you just leave it at auto and auto, there's no guarantee that it's going to connect to your Ender 3 or whatever profile you have selected. You have to have that mapping. Uh, once you have the mapping, if you really want it to, you could spend a little time and SSH into the Raspberry Pi and create new serial port mappings that have a different name so you can create an Ender 3 Pro mapping as an example but you'd have to map it back to a USB port and all of that anyway. So I'm not sure if it buys you enough to justify spending the time. If you have four printers, it might be worth doing, but for two, uh, to me personally, it's not worth it. If you'd like me to do a video on how to actually do that, uh, leave a comment below and I can do that for you. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out which one is which. So let's just select this first one, the ACM0 and hit connect and leave your rates at auto and then if we go over to terminal we should see it trying to connect here you can see that it's trying the different rates and it did connect so let's see what it connected to All right, so here is the first actual receive from the printer. Uh, you can see, if you actually just read through it, that it is connecting to my TAS6 here. So now we know going forward that this ACM0 is my TAS6. So we can just go ahead and make a note of that. And we're gonna have to create a profile for that one as well, which I'll do here in a second. So now if we disconnect, just switch this back to auto, and then go to the next one, which is USB 0, uh, we should connect to the Ender 3. And we are connected. I'm looking for that connection string. All right, so here's our receive, and then machine type, Ender 3 Pro. All right, so we now know that uh, USB 0 is going to be our Indoor 3 Pro. Alright, so let's go ahead and add in that other printer now. So we just go up to settings there, go to printer profiles, and add profile. And I'll just do TAS 6. And then you would have to know your print bed and volume. You can get that from Cura. I cover this in my other videos. Um, which I'll link in the description below, but I'll go ahead and show you where you can get that. Um, so this is a version of Cura that's specific for your TAS. Um, it's a little different than the standard one, but a lot of the settings are the same, especially if we're looking at the printer itself. So if we go to Settings, Printer, and then Manage Printers, we can see the printer that we're looking at here. If we go to Machine Settings, we can actually get the settings that we're looking for. So 280, 280, and 250. So let's go ahead and add that over here. Then we want to make sure that heated bed is checked. 
and the origin is lower left, which it also shows that here, oh, it doesn't show lower left, but it says origin at center is not checked, um, which is the other option. All right, so that covers everything here. Jumping over to axis, uh, I will just leave this as default. It's the maximum speed that can be used when you're using the manual controls. You can change it if you want to set a cap, but I'll typically control that when actually using the controls. So uh, the defaults have been fine for me. And then a hot end, uh, the nozzle size, you have to get from Cura as well if you don't know it offhand. Uh, the TAS is 0 0.05, which I always thought was kind of odd, but that's what it is. So set this to 0.5. I'm sorry, 0 0.5, not 0 0.05. All right. And that's really all there is to it. So now we hit confirm and save. So now under printer profile here, if we disconnect, we can see that we have our Endor 3 Pro and our TAS 6, and we have our two mappings up here, the ACM 0 and USB 0. So, all right, so now if we wanted to connect to the TAS 6, you can do, um, just go and select ACM 0, make sure your rate's at auto, and then select TAS 6 so you have your uh, printer profile, and then hit connect. Then if we watch this, we should see it connecting Sorry, I keep trying to scroll down when there's nothing to scroll past, so it's scrolling on the screen. Uh, it should take just a second here to connect. And you can see that we connected to the TAS 6. So if we go ahead and disconnect, switch back over to USB 0, auto, and indoor 3, and hit connect we'll be connecting back to our Indoor 3. Which it seems like it connects to the Indoor 3 much quicker than the Taz, but either way it works. All right, so now you can have an auto connect on startup. You can select one of them and have it auto connect if you want it to. Uh, that's worked okay for me. Um, that's really a preference. Typically I don't do that. I'll just connect to the one I'm wanting to. Uh, the save connection settings, it always wipes it anytime I'm changing these settings or going back and forth. So that has that won't work with a multiple printer setup. All right, so one other thing that I wanted to cover related to having multiple 3D printers on the same Raspberry Pi is if you have a Pi Cam or a single USB camera, it's going to be pointed to the same thing regardless. So if you're wanting to watch one printer or the other printer, you will have to move things around and make sure that it's connected to that. Um, in this case, I have a small ribbon cable, so there's no way I'll be able to watch both printers at the same time. The ribbon cable is only long enough to point to the Indoor 3. I could get a longer USB cord to move the Raspberry Pi around so that I could watch both of them at the same time if I wanted to. It is an option, but it's a limitation of doing it this way. Um, you would have the same limitation if you were to break this out into four separate instances on the same Raspberry Pi as well, which I'll cover here in a second. Really, the only way to get around this would be having multiple cameras or multiple instances. All right, so that covers um, connecting two printers at the same time. Uh, the third and fourth printer would be the same. You will end up having uh, four connection, three or four connections here, and then your three or four profiles down here that you will have to go between. I guess if you have four printers, it can get a little confusing uh, selecting the right profile and the right port. So if that is the case, I would map them all out somewhere and then write it down so you have it for reference. The other thing you can do in this case is um, remap the serial ports with a different name, which I mentioned earlier. It does take a bit of work up front to do it, uh, so I don't know if it's worth it or not. And I don't want to do a video on it if nobody's really interested in it. But if you are interested, please leave a comment below and I'll get that added to the backlog. So what that would actually look like is you would have a under serial port Indoor 3 Pro you would select and then your printer profile select Indoor 3 Pro and then your rate always select auto, let it automatically calculate it or find it. So it doesn't really save you any mouse clicks, but it will make it a little bit easier if you're 
if you forget which port is what, uh, you just map it based on the name. All right, so the other option we have is actually having four separate instances of Octopi installed on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this. To me personally, there's a lot of extra overhead involved. There's a lot of additional setup that's required, and um, it would only have one printer in each one, so you don't have to do the mapping between them, but you would have to change the color here and specify the printer name up here. Um, so you know which one you're on. But when you're connecting, you'd also have to specify a port. So it'd be like octopi 2local colon, um, I don't know, 5000 as an example. And for printer 1, then 5002 for printer 2. So you would have to know that mapping in order to actually connect. Um, I have a couple friends who have used this and then have reverted back uh, to me personally I've never set it up because I didn't think it was worth the time the only thing it'll really buy you is uh, it allows you to control different plugins on each instance so if you had a plugin you're trying to use with one printer that can potentially be experimental or not compatible with others and you didn't want to take that chance you could split it out I guess really it's a preference thing. If you are interested in seeing that, leave a comment below. I can set up a video it's just splitting this out into two instances with these two printers to kind of show you what it looks like. I would revert it back, but, but if you're interested, I want to make sure to give you that walkthrough. So just let me know below. All right, so that really covers everything related to uh, setting up multiple printers with Octoprint. It's not difficult and it does provide a lot of advantages. Uh, especially if you only have one Raspberry Pi and you're not looking to have dedicated ones for each printer. Uh, if I was actually looking to split these out into separate instances, to be honest, at that point, I would probably just buy separate Raspberry Pis. I would go with the Pi 3 Plus instead of the 4, save a little bit of money there, and, and just get two of them. Uh, but that's, just, again, my opinion. If you think differently, please leave a comment below. I would love to get your feedback. Also, if you have any questions on this process or need help actually setting it up, leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And again, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. It'll really help us out. All right, guys, that covers how to connect multiple 3D printers to your Raspberry Pi. Um, with the standard setup, you can connect four printers. Uh, you can either use a single uh, URL for all of them and then map it in between, or you can use four separate URLs with different port mappings, um, depending upon whatever's easier for you. I personally prefer the single URL and not have to worry about the ports and then half, and then selecting the printer that I'm gonna be connecting to. Um, it gives you some simplicity advantages and there's really not that much of an advantage of splitting them out. The only thing is you would have the one printer on each of them so you won't have to select the printer and you can set up different plugins for that instance. Uh, again, to me, it's not worth it. Uh, using a single instance is the way I would go. If you feel differently, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.